to the martial art field. I am so gratified to bring you a celebrity, uh, Mr. Texas, and sometimes Mr. Oklahoma, and also Mr. Breakthrough, an author of a great book called Breakthrough Leadership. Uh, started martial arts when he was 13 and world titles in breaking with Iska. Chip, yes, say sir. hello to the audience. How are you? Hello, everybody. And uh, what an honor and what a great introduction. And I hope I can live up to the hype, my friends. <laughs> you, you got some explaining to do, as they say. <laughs> so tell me your success of marriage over 27 years. First of all, is uh, Glenn Ann still talking to you? She uh, selectively, selectively. <laughs> yes. So absolutely, 28 and a half years. You know, I, I, I just... God put a gift in my life. That's all I know how nice. to say. And she completes me in such a way. We've run our business together for over 25 years. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I tell people all the time, she's the brain. She dresses me. I just show up and make things happen. That's it. Man. Great. Two or three suggestions you have for fatherhood, because I know you have three children. Uh, what would you say? First and foremost, communicate with your kids. It's never talk to them, talk to them, talk to them. I think that's one of the biggest issues we have sometimes as parents. We kind of uh, avoid conversation and avoid hard topics. Face them, man. Uh, your kids need to hear that stuff from you and uh, make sure they know how much you love them. I, I actively, I, probably five times a day, tell all three of my kids, and my oldest is 21 now, that I love them. I, I, I just, I have this fear that they're going to not feel like they were loved, and I want them to know that I love them. I've got their back. And anything they ask me is fair game, man. I'll sit down and have a conversation from the birds and the bees to anything about character, whatever you want to talk about. I, I think those things are just massive. And the next thing is, is last little thing real quick is uh, they don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do and mm -hmm. model the behaviors you want. Them. You know, if you're going to treat some at when you're, when you're mad at somebody, you're going to treat them bad. Is that the way you want your son treating people later? Because that's what he's seeing. And so I think that's, uh, that's tough. And so those are my, probably my key, key takeaways made. Chip, let me jump in. What if one of those children want to tune you out because they want their <laughs> independence? Now what do you do? Well, you know, my mom gave me some really great advice, Mr. John. And, and here it is. Uh, to get to a kid's mind, you've got to touch their heart. And if I have a relationship with my kid where there is a good mutual respect and a high level of communication and they want to begin to shut me out, then I, I've got to find a way to touch their heart, to touch their emotions a little bit and to open their mind. And so what that means is, is I'm hyper disciplined and strict with my kids. And I, I, I believe that that's necessary. And I have three hyper uh, successful for their ages and very active little kids, kids. And, and if, uh, you know, there's so much power in looking at your kid, if they've done something wrong and not just browbeating them, but just giving them a look and just saying, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of disappointed right now. That breaks my heart a little bit. And you watch them wilt. And then that allows you to know I've kind of touched that heart. Now I can reach into that mind. And uh, I think you can always find a way through their shell. And if they're trying to be independent and wanting their space and cutting you off, there's a reason. You just got to search for it. You can get through it. Great. I want to get the remote control and switch channels for just a moment. In the martial art world, for the martial arts school ownership, and you do talk to a lot of people every day. You're, you're coaching and mentoring and helping them. What's the and right now, I mean, you guys might have a spike in your own region and you got the COVID challenge, as they say. What's the biggest message broadly that you want to get across to the martial art field? What would you say? Practice what you preach. <laughs> so here, here it is. Uh, you know, we get on the mat and we teach these tenets courtesy and integrity and humility and, you know, chase you be passionate with what you do. And I, I see sometimes martial arts school owners, they deliver that great message, but in the moment of things going bad, maybe they're not as passionate and they get a little, you know, the, the anxiety steps in on them and just want to encourage people that our nation, our, we have been through some such hard times in the past and 
this, I know it's cliche, but it will pass. We're just gonna have to work hard at times to get through it. And so keep your head up and be innovative. Think of ways you can pivot. I know that's been just such an overused term in our industry, mm -hmm. but how can you pivot yourself and stay relevant in your client size and continue to deliver, over serve, over deliver so that they appreciate you and, and want to stay with you and see the relevance of it. Chip, here comes this curveball to you. You're, <laughs> it's three and two, bases are loaded, it's the ninth inning. You have no idea what this pitcher's going to throw at you. So all of a sudden, he's got this sidearm slider. It's coming at you. It looks like it's going to hit you. And here's COVID. Right. Coming right at Chip. Right. And you're saying, oh, my God, my, I'm, I'm not feeling very secure or stable. Right. What other things, while this ball is traveling at 82 miles an hour, off speed pitch, you're, you might go in the bucket and cave out and strike out. What are you thinking about right now with, with, the, with the issue of spiking in your area and not knowing a little bit down the road? What, what do I – what do you want me to think about? Well, I want you, this is going to sound, and I hope it doesn't sound too cliche, but what I begin to go into my mind and I think about my order of priorities, why do I do what I do and what makes me passionate about it? Why is it important? I begin to think about how many people are depending on me. How, many, how often do parents come to you and say, oh my gosh, that message you passed along to my kid or that even a technique sometimes you taught my kid was absolutely life changing for them. And find in your mind in your world you know bring remind yourself of how important you are and maybe even go to a file of uh, uh of uh letters you've received because i think a lot of martial arts scores have that i have that file where i can open it up and pull out something that just absolutely brings tears of letters i've gotten from people of how what we do has changed their lives and that gives me the confidence to stay in the pocket and face that pitch as that ball comes at me as opposed to stepping out and run. Now, do, does that give me the answer of how I handle it yet? It does not, but it bolsters my confidence and reminds me in, in chip world, I'm where God put me, I need to be here and I need to stand in and do my best to deliver. But Chip, I could be insecure and say, look, I, as a DH hitter, I don't even wanna to go to the plate with bases loaded, but you're in that position right now. So what are you doing to feel more secure it, with the circumstances feeling insecure? What are you doing? Yes, sir. High hyper communication with our students, text message, uh, reminders of everything, keeping all of our changes in front of them in forefront, making sure that they're hyper aware. And I, I I'm hope using that word hyper, but just uber aware of the steps we're taking to protect them as far as, you know, disinfecting, cleaning, leaving extra spaces between classes. Mm -hmm. So we have time to keep them safe and keep them in the building. Uh, and just communication, communication, communication. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm looking for how can I continue to reach them? And that's the pivot to the virtual world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for what, what we did is we created Facebook group classrooms and we locked mm -hmm. them down and we just allow the students that are in that program, in that classroom, mm -hmm. we upload videos three times a week into those classrooms for them. They resubmit videos to us and I have some of my team assigned to following up, feedbacking, and taking care of them. And then we have our people coming in on the mat. So I guess you could kind of call it hybrid. And then we run Zoom classes as well. So we're kind of doing all the above. It's like, it's like investments, Mr. John. You know, if I just took all of my money and put it into uh, a CD and just left it alone, I might gain a little interest over time, but it's not diversified, right? Mm -hmm. So how can I, as a business owner, just because I'm a martial artist doesn't mean I'm a meathead that doesn't know anything. I can be intelligent in the way I attack things. So uh, I, I diversify. I've got the mat, and for those who have the confidence and willingness to step on the mat, we're here for you as long as the government is allowing that. And yep. then I have this virtual classroom you can step into. And then, and, and I think sometimes there's some fear around this whole virtual thing, right? Uh, like, oh, virtual is not as good. It's not good enough. Well, it may be all you got. It's better than nothing. And so many, and, and, and I want to kind of jump back to that folder, that file folder of things that people have said, testimonials. A massive percentage of those weren't, man, thanks for teaching Joey a beautiful sidekick. It was thanks for giving him the confidence to overcome. Thanks for the character messages you delivered that got him through a hard time in school. And so I can deliver that almost just as well virtually as I can in person. And so 
I'm thinking about how can I diversify, reach as many people as I can, over communicate to them that I'm still here. And here's what's important. I don't step into it tentatively. I mm. step into it with passion. So when mm. I communicate, I send them up. Hey, we're happy. We're excited. Mm. We love you guys. And we're on. Let's do this. We're not tentative about anything we do. Mm -hmm. Because that's totally your thing. Your whole theme is like breakthrough. You have <laughs> to break through this theory. And you're breaking through with new innovations. You just yes, talked sir. about how you're thinking about innovating and ideating and creating. This is what you got. This is the tools you got. Get in there, man. Start rowing the boat. Do something. Yes. Fake it, that's fake it till you make it, right? Yeah. Yes, that's, that's right. And, and Mr. John, if I can say one more thing too, we've been uh, very, very intentional with engaging our team. Even my youngest instructors, we have meetings with those guys and we go, hey, how do you feel? What do you think we can do? Because some of them have brought some pretty good ideas. And it's like, wow, I didn't think of that. So, uh, and, and it gives them a sense of ownership and they want to be a part of it. So I think it's just leverage the resources you have and, uh, and, and, and stay positive. The, the cup is half full, man. It's not half empty right now. Yeah, you always talk about breakthrough. And, you know, my question is um, mentally, Chip, you still are in the war and then the fight mentally. You're going through it, you know? There's uncertainty and there's doubt and, and it's unsettling at times. <clears throat> so um, mentally, each day, because we, we step back a little bit with our fear and doubt, but where do you have to be for that mental breakthrough? Where do you have to be right now? So I know this is going to sound a little crazy, but Every day I have kind of my rituals and routines. I get up, I like to exercise first. I read, I put positive things in my head. I have some prayer time and I go and attack my day. I start my day every day getting my mind right. And the next thing is, is uh, we, we have tried very, very hard to be frugal in the way that we've run our businesses for over 25 years. And so we're, we're, we're a low to no debt business. And so I also kind of have this peace of mind of knowing that if, man, if the poop hits the fan next week, mm -hmm. I can get completely even out of this and do something else. And so I live with the confidence, you know, my, my dad raised me, we, we, mm -hmm. we, we mechanics, we built things, we did all kinds of stuff. And so I don't have any major fear. I would hate to lose what I'm passionate about, but if that mm -hmm. happens, and what that does is it gives me a peace. So every day, if I come, I, I think we think better when we're peaceful and we think better when, when we're in a relaxed state. And Love so it. I start the day positive. I plug myself positive things in, whether it's, you know, a, 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 a daily, you know, Bible verse, or it's just some sort of daily a podcast. Sometimes it's just something that gives you, man, that's powerful and mm. start the day off strong and attack that day that way. But there's also this peace of mind of knowing that if everything fell, else fell apart, I own this building. I know how to do, I could cross over into sales. I could do all kinds of things. So I don't have a lot of fear. I have respect, but not a lot of fear. Great. And the greatest motivation that you have when you wake up and some of my closing questions every day, and it changes every day, that vision of yours might change or adjust. So maybe you see it clearly. What is it down deep, Chip, that, over the years, I mean, if, to get a world title in breaking, I mean, there's times when you had to just up your game. You didn't have a choice. You're in front of an audience. Uh, you got the cameras rolling, and you're either going to hit the block, and you might injure yourself, or you're going to break through. So at the end of the day, when you had your biggest challenge, and you're going for a world title in breaking, which is a mental metaphor of where we are right now, what is it that inspires you the most? Uh, it's, it's my responsibility as a man to take care of my family and those families that depend on my business. That's what drives me. You know, when worse comes to worse, I, I train pretty hard, even though I'm not in a competitive mode right now. I still go do some demos and do some stuff, but uh, I just consistently train hard because I want to be that uh that warrior in the garden and yeah. when the 
comes, I can step out of the garden and I'm ready to go. And I think that should be the mindset of a martial artist anyway. We should live martial arts from the, er, from the start of the day to the end of the day. I, I like to think of, you know, for almost 50 years old, I try to kind of keep myself in fight shape in time, man. Excellent. I'm ready to go. But my drive is my beautiful wife, my three beautiful kids. And then right mm-hmm. outside that circle is the several families that make their living from my business. And I brought them into that. I brought them into that. And it's, I feel a big responsibility to make sure it stays alive and viable so it can continue to serve not just me, but them. And then outside of that, my community, because I have people come to us all the time and go, you're such a pillar in our community. And we appreciate the positivity you bring with the, the things you do. And so those are the things that drive me. It's just kind of going back and remembering my why, uh, what's my purpose. And I will, I do want to say, and I hope it's okay to say this, but the, the one step just above that is because I, I'm a Christian and I, God is first man. And, and my wife is right right there and then my kids and my team our business our Mm. family what we do and Mm. I just go back to those priorities and I think about Mm. those things and that drives me so I and when you say break yourself I've severed my Achilles tendon stress fractured my tibia I've broken my wrist crushed my knuckles I crushed my knuckles fighting before all kinds of things and uh you just have to be willing to just bite the bullet and do what you have to do in the moment and then after sometimes you got to ice yourself a little bit you know I love your drive, love your innovation, love your passion. Most of all, I think the people that have, have been a student under you love what you bring, which is you are requiring uh, to your students for me to up my game, for you to hold me to a high standard. And your message says, you ain't going to hold me to a high standard unless Chip is requiring a lot from yourself. I think that's my message. In closing, can you give me a positive quote? It might be from, I know you're a Maxwell certified speaker. I'm putting you on the spot. Any positive quote to finish off this great interview? What would you say? Oh, wow. You did. You caught me off guard with that one. Uh, you know, I think in, when, when you mentioned Maxwell, the first thing that popped in my head is his definition of leadership. It's influence and nothing more. Uh, And I think about that a lot because when you ask people generally across the board, are you a leader? Many people will say no. And I will follow that up with, do you have a younger younger sibling? Do you have a cousin, a kid that plays in your front yard? And they always answer yes. And when they do, I remind them that because that kid comes into your yard to play, you're influencing them. So therefore you are a leader. And so uh, I would leave you all with this. Uh, our actions are so much more powerful than our words. And uh, it's one thing to talk it. It's a whole different game to walk it. And I encourage us all to be walkers in our industry and to be that pillar for our nation of, of uh, positivity, a good mindset, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, in every way. And remember, uh, never undervalue how much people are looking to you. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Uh, Leadership is, is influence and nothing more, man. And every day we're influencing people. How do you want to influence them? Chip, what's great is that you and Glenn Ann have spent so much of your life in the martial arts, in the trenches, helping other people, helping the community, loving martial arts, keeping the standard high. I think that's a great inspiration of a lifespan of many years. So let me, on behalf of an audience, show our appreciation for your dedication and your devotion and your passion. Thank you so much for taking this time. Thank you, Mr. John. I want to thank you and Brian and Joseph and all the people that helped kind of pull this together. And just thanks for giving me the trust and the honor of being here. Uh, and I, if I can help any of you guys or anybody in any way, I'm always a message away. And, Just, I love serving, I love helping, and I'm very passionate about martial arts and teaching. So thank you all for this opportunity, and and I hope it was was what you needed. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Got it. Brian, uh, I wish Chip wouldn't leave so much on the table. I'm I'm kidding around. That was (laughs) was really wonderful, Chip. That was great. Thank you, sir. Uh, Yes, it was. you're You're a very 
I, I don't mean, I, I mean this in a very compliment. You're an easy interview. You just take off, you know, you're just, you just need, uh, you don't even need to be wound up. You're just passionate and you're on point and you're saying good stuff. I mean, you know, you're just, you're there. Thank you, sir. I, that means a lot. I, I, uh, I am an every day, a student of life. Uh, and I truly, I truly feel a lot of weight to deliver and do what I believe I was called to do. And this is a big part of it. And I, Excellent. Uh, so I, I think the word that I give people when they ask me, how do you do what you do? Like I teach seminars sometimes and I turn on my, my little monitor to monitor my body. And in like three, four hours, I'll burn like 5,000 calories, but I just want to give my all. And I don't know how to give anything less. And when people ask me, how do you do it? I don't have an answer other than I'm just passionate. And I love, I love serving and I love seeing people succeed. I love it. You do it well. You wear it well. Thank you. you. deliver it well. So thank you so much. Thank Brian, you. are you happy? You okay? Absolutely. It was fantastic. Thank you so much, Chip. Yes, sir. Hey, thank you, man. Okay. I look forward to more. If I can do anything else for you guys or, or, or whatever, please reach out. And I have to kind of apologize to Brian. I had a little communication stuff going on with Miss Leslie uh, that helps me. Her husband's going through a real hard medical time right now. And so we've kind of had some, some communication issues. So I, I hope that was what we were able to do. And, Beautiful. We're giving yeah. you a virtual hug. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll chat soon. I'll give it back. Thank you. I enjoyed right. it. I had a great time, man. Thank you. Thank you.